All right. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Um, uh, thank you guys for uh, having me out to, uh, to see you guys again. It's always a pleasure to come to this church. Uh, so many young families, so many cute kids. Your kids are cuter than other churches' kids. I'm just not going to lie. Um, during communion today, every like every eighth kid, I'd be like, oh my God, you're so cute. And just like, it was crazy. Maybe I'm getting old and I'm into a good do mode. I don't know. But uh, so the the topic is not what you see on the screen, which is it. the topic is to another topic, spiritual warfare. So that is the topic. And we want to talk about uh, that topic, right, Tony? Spiritual warfare. Okay. Um, and so some of the things that Tony asked me to talk about is why do we have spiritual warfare? What's who's the commander? Who's in charge? Who's our allies? Who's the enemy? All of these things. And so we, we want to think about spiritual warfare. Um, just sort of discuss... Um, this 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 constant struggle that we have, all of us as Christians. Um, so I love this quote. Um, it's kind of a depressing quote. Maybe that's why I love it. Or it's very freeing. There never was and never will be a place on earth free from sorrows. The only sorrowless place possible is in the heart when the Lord is present there. And that's just kind of a setup, which is there is no place to escape sorrow, to escape misery, to escape struggle, to escape pain. And we can try, we can go to different places. And in fact, most of the, the travel business is, is built around selling you the concept that if you go to this place, there's no stress here, right? This is where the massage is. This is where the, the drinks are with the umbrella. This is where the person, you know, takes you and, and you bathe in whatever. And, you know, they soak you with all kinds of creams. And then your problems go away here. And what this saying is saying is there's just no place like that. Even there are even people who say, you know, I'm going to go to the monastery and I'm going to get away from all of this. You think there's, you're getting away from temptation and struggle at the monastery? No, uh, forget Satan, the other monks. You know, like there's gossip at the monastery and people stabbing each other in the back and people talking about each other. And of course, it doesn't matter. You think in the clergy, you know, a bunch of clergy guys run around and none of us have uh, struggles and we don't gossip and talk about people. And there isn't, of course, there's no place on earth that's like this. And sometimes our first attack by Satan is to let us think there is. And we just have to find it. If we moved, you know, if I went to a different church, maybe if I got a different priest, maybe if we had a different servant, if maybe if I got a different job, if I have a different wife, if I had different kids, right? And, and we start imagining all the places where there is no misery, okay? And then what the saint says is, is the only place there's no misery is in the heart, alone in the human heart. And he said, doesn't mean be like a recluse and be by yourself, but when Christ is present there. Right. So the only place that I can go to get away from all of it is inside. And, and, and that's when I take God with me. And that's the only place there is no misery and there is no sorrow. Right. Now, this could be very depressing, right? Because, you know, well, that kind of sucks um, because there's no place, there's no sorrow. Right. But it's actually very freeing. Right. Because if I'm the person who's been chasing this sorrowless place my whole life, moving and changing houses and changing jobs and changing spouses and changing whatever and changing friends. It's kind of relaxing and say, you know, it doesn't matter if you go to this church or that church or you go here or there or you have this wife or that wife or this kid or that kid. It's all the same, right? Everyone has this sorrow. And the only way you escape it, quote unquote, is you go inside, right? And this is what Christ said, right? He said, the kingdom of heaven is where? inside us right it's not a place you know so when we pray we don't need to look up it's not like it's over there right the the, the kingdom of heaven's inside so when we pray we look in right and that's where christ dwells and that's the only place that we can find this comfort that we're looking for so the struggles are everywhere and they're continuous and they keep getting ramped up saint athanasius says it is a fact brothers and sisters that the path of the saints in this life is one full of troubles. All right, so now he's even laying out for it further. <laughs> the path of the saints is one full of troubles. And we see this in the life of all the saints, right? You read the life of any saint. You know, I mean, most of them, you know, died 
by you know being tortured and got their heads cut off not right and then you know even saints like pope Carlos, and there it is um even saints like pope Carlos, you think okay you know he's patriarch you know he's he's top of the food chain right he's the he's the big he's the alpha dog they were they were attacking him vicious nonstop. His own priests were turning against him. They all they all tried to get rid of him as a pope. I mean, the amount of persecution that he underwent. If you've ever read this book, Silent Patriarch, you see how much garbage this guy took. Right. This is the path of the saints. This is all of our paths. Right. There's no running away from this path. Right. The only choice that we get is whether or not we want to take this path on with Christ or not. Right. And, and every time we come up against a cross, you know, I always think of the very first cross, right? The cross of Christ. Right. At that cross, there were two thieves, right? A left and a right. And at that cross, the very first cross, it reminds me of every single cross in every one of our lives. And we all have lots of crosses, all of us different but all have lots of crosses nonetheless. And we get to pick, do I want to be right-hand thief or left-hand thief? Do I want to be the guy who says, you know what? I don't want to be on this cross. I want down. I want off the cross. If you're the son of God, get us both out of here. Or I can be the person who says, look, I'm on this cross. I want to be with you on the cross. I want you to be with me on this cross, right? And every time we come to a cross, we have to, we say this prayer and we pick. Do I I, do I pray the, I don't want this cross prayer? I mean, you get a, a jerk boss at work. What's the first thing we pray? Lord, please get him fired. Please have him die. Please have him not do this crap to me anymore. Please let him understand my worth. Please let him, right? What am I praying? I don't want the cross. Get rid of it, right? Uh, such and such gets sick. Someone has cancer. Someone has a disease. Lord, please heal him. Wait a minute. Is that the prayer? Is that God's will or your will? Are you just trying to pray the cross away? And that, that's the first thing we do, right? Everyone, get, let's get together and pray that this not happen. Well, maybe it's supposed to happen. Maybe it's what needs to happen. Maybe it was the best thing that ever happened, right? And so a lot of our prayers, when we think about them, a lot of them are left-hand thief prayers, right? Where we're asking God to, no cross, please. No, thank you. Make it easier, right? And so what St. Athanasius is telling us is that the path of the saints, this is our path as Christians. It is a path of struggle and trials. And Christ promised us this, didn't he? What did he say? In the world, you will have tribulation. End of sentence. That's it. Ever since the fall, in the world, you will have tribulation. Uh, Eve through pain and childbearing, Adam through the sweat of his brow eating. However you want to you know, imagine this pain, it is there. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I overcame the world, right? And so in me, you can overcome the world, uh, consistent with the very first quote, in Christ, in your heart, that's where you overcome the world. If you try to dance with the devil and you try to, you know, that's a Ozzy Osbourne song, dance with the devil by the pale moonlight. It's not important. But if you want to, <laughs> I just, you know, anyway, um, if you want to you want to get into the world and you want to live in the world and you want to kind of you know work this edge right where you're like i'll be in the world i'll take from the world but i'll you know i'll really you know i'll, I'll keep my christian life it doesn't work so well right because the world just has a way of getting to us and it also doesn't work so well that i use the tools of the world to overcome the world right so i've got all this stress in my life and all this anxiety in my life and all this pain and i know i'm going to drink i'm going to go to vegas i'm going to party I'm going to have an affair. I'm going to get a new car. I'm going to get a new boat. I'm going to get a new pair of shoes, but like really nice, expensive shoes, right? I'm going to get a new purse. I'm going to get whatever, okay? And what am I doing? I'm trying to use the world to overcome the world, right? I'm trying to use the tools that the world offers me stuff. I'm going to take a trip. I saw a commercial, you know, about with sandals, resort and spa. And if you put hot stones on my back, my life gets better. So I'll go put hot stones on my back because that apparently solves all the world's problems. It did in the commercial, right? And so I'm going to try, okay? And eventually what a lot of us do is we try a whole bunch of things. I mean, everything. And, you know, if only I graduate college, I'll be so happy. If only I became a doctor, I'll be so happy. If only I got this residency, I'll be so happy. If only I bought this house, I'll be so happy. This other house, if I have a kid, God, give me a kid. Okay, God, give me two kids. God, take my kids, right? So we, we just keep going, right? And then, 
you know, there's this thing here in the United States is very common called midlife crisis, right? What's the midlife crisis, right? You get to like 50, like my age, and you think to yourself, wow, nothing has worked. It all it sucks. Nothing has solved the pain in my life. And you have a crisis, right? Because I've done all the things. I've made all the money. I've bought all the stuff. I've done everything that can be done and nothing worked. Crisis, right? And now you realize, oh, I'm not going to be happy, right? That, that hole that's inside me, that, that emptiness is not going to get filled. Nothing in this world can fill that emptiness, right? And the reason is the emptiness is ultimately what? It's God-shaped. It's an infinite hole. The hole that's inside us is infinite. And what we do is we spend most of our life trying to fill it with finite things, with material things. And you can't fill something in number one, two, and trick. Number one, two, and three trick, right? Which is fill the hole inside us that we all have, that emptiness, that, you know, gee, lacking. I don't want to fill it with something. If I became this then everyone at church is going to look at me differently and I'm going to feel good about myself. Well, guess what? Do the thing and watch everyone gossip about you. And then you figure, oh my gosh, that didn't work. Okay. So one of Shoy Kamil, that we just canonized him June 9th. He's one of my favorites. He says, the saints are not humans without sin. They are humans who have struggled against sin. And this is really important because and I don't know why, but a lot of us were taught that you go to church to be good. Good people are at church. And, you know, th that's, that's what people do church. Okay. The good people, the, the sons of God, we don't do those things. Those outside people do those things, right? Well, it turns out we do those things and just like the outside people do those. Things. Like there's, there's studies on morality and they look at excuse me, Christians versus non-Christians and their behavior. And guess what they find? No difference, right? So it's about that. It isn't about being good, right? It isn't about, it isn't about achieving holiness, right? Where there's certain things that... Um, that always works, just hitting it. And so when we get in this concept where we think being good is, is the deal, right? Well, what happens when we come up against St. Paul's words when he says, no one is good, no, not one. And all of us fall short of the glory of God. And then that can cause kind of a depression, right? Because no matter how hard I try, I'm not good. No matter how hard I try, I fail. And so what the church teaches us and what Abunab Shur Kamen is trying to teach you here is a saint is a sinner. All of them, all of them. And so every person except for Christ alone is a sinner, which means they messed up. Did Pope Carlos sin? Yeah, all the time. Did St. Anthony sin? Sure, all the time. Does M. Basarapion sin? Sure, all the time. Right? Right? So, so... <laughs> I can say Pope Carillo's sin. You're all like, yeah, I'm a sophomore. I don't know. Um, <laughs> archdeacons, never. Um, what was I saying? So every, every person is a sinner, right? We're all like this, right? So then what's good and bad? It's not about that. It's about the struggle, right? It's the battle. And it's not about achieving some level right? Because we're never going to achieve a level. In fact, the day you say, I've achieved the level, God help you. The day you say, you know what? I'm pretty good. I deserve to be in this church. I'm a righteous Christian person. The day you say that, we have a big, big problem. And I wouldn't take communion if I were you until you figure out why that's false. So there's nothing more dangerous than leading to that. Right. And sometimes we'll see that even in, in the in the ethos of, of of people we see in the church, you know, you'll ask someone older, you'll say, Who's your confession father? And they'll say, Confession, that khalas, man. When I was young, I confessed, you know, when I was a teenager, but now, khalas. What? 
well, what did you just say? You just said you, you don't need to confess? Um, wow. Heaven help us that we never get to that point where we ever make a statement like that or, or ever have a thought like that. And that's the most dangerous thought there is in the church. And that thought is the one that leads to what? What's the next thing? Judging those who are sinful. Because, you know, I'm not. And so I'm going to judge those who are the youth, uh, the guy with the earring and the girl with the pink hair and, the, and this person with the tattoos and the person who does the thing I don't think they should be doing. I'm going to judge them. Why? Because I'm here and you're not. Okay? As we said in the sermon, Christ didn't come for these people. Right? And as I'm often fond of saying, if you're at this level, you're up here and you're, self, you're, you're righteous and you're a great person, then just don't come to church. Just stay home and just be righteous. And just hang out with your own righteousness. Because the church isn't for you. The church is a hospital for sick people. And so what is Christianity about? It's not about being good. It's about the struggle. And the struggle has sometimes very little to do with, with effects, with how it turns out. And some people are called to struggle their whole life with no apparent victory whatsoever. And that's okay. Because it isn't about the victory. It's about the struggle because the struggle is the victory. You guys ever watch Rocky, the movie, right? So Apollo Creed knocks down Rocky, right? And he just, he's beating the heck out of him. First one. And then this one scene happens where he knocks him down. Everyone is telling Rocky to stay down, right? Including Mickey. You guys know Mickey? Mickey's his coach. Love Mickey, right? Mickey's like, stay down, stay down, Right. The audience, the, the crowd is telling him to stay down, okay? And then what does Rocky do? He just starts grabbing for the rope and pulling himself up. And then that's when the music starts playing, dun, 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 right? And you just see Apollo Creed look at him and go, what are you doing? Apollo Creed wants him to stay down. Everybody wants him to stay down, okay? But that's when the music starts playing, and that's when you know he's already won he didn't stay down now what happens as soon as rocky gets up paul creed knocks him right down again that's okay that's just the way satan works with us he tells us stay down and in staying down that's the victory that's how he wins as soon as you give up 